All right, my country, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I call it to your time, Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have come back to MC Potoski Talk Show here yeah, on YouTube, where you get the latest news and entertainment around the world. If it's your first time on this great platform where we react to all videos that comes our way, please consider to subscribe and Put on your thumb bell, and if you love what we do on this great platform, why don't you give us a thumbs up and also share this video? I appreciate all my subscribers. We got Almighty, we bless you guys. And if you have anything to say about this video, you can also drop your comment at the comment section, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting more time, guys, let's dive into this video. Uh, the Nigerian government has announced it will pursue the case further against Namdekano, uh, saying he was only discharged but not acquitted. On Thursday, an appeals court dropped terrorism and treason charges against Kano whose IPOP group is agitating for a breakaway state in the southeast. While the National Security Council says it will back the position of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami, Minister of Police Affairs Mohamed Dingyadi says Kanu has not been acquitted and that a political uh, solution was not discussed. Observe that... Uh... Kanu was discharged, but he was not acquitted. So, uh, government is uh, considering the appropriate action to be taken on the matter, and uh, Nigerians will be notified of the position that will finally be taken on the matter in due course. The political decision, uh, the, the court decision was what we discussed. And I think that is what we reported. The solutions to issues of this nature can be considered provided they are not subjudue. Well, joining us now in the studio is Aloy Ejimako, one of Namdi Kano's counsel. Thank you so much for joining us on the news it's tonight. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, you just listened to the Minister of Police okay. Affairs. Uh, Mohamed Dinyadi after the National Security Council meeting today. They seem to be backing the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice stands that one, your client was discharged and not acquitted. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? And what's the difference between <laughs> a discharge and an acquittal? <laughs> well, first of all, we have to have a factual clarity mm -hmm. about what uh, the, the essence of the ruling yesterday. Um, the, I believe the Attorney General came out too quickly to interpret and he ended up misinterpreting the tenor and the reach and the true meaning of the judgment and um, he ended up playing what I would term semantic games. There's really no difference between discharge and acquitted. It's a very thin line. If somebody is discharged, he really doesn't have to be acquitted is a word of art when lawyers say or judges say you're discharged and acquitted so they really don't have to say the acquit acquitted part mm. if you don't have any charges standing against you what are you doing in detention it's very simple you don't have to be a lawyer to figure that out so i think what is playing out here is a, an extension or escalation of is the same executive rascal like rascality recklessness lawlessness that led to the extraordinary rendition in the first place otherwise a well-ordered society a responsible a responsible government is supposed to respond within the framework of the law if the attorney general is talking about taking the matter to appeal right. to the supreme court of nigeria i probably won't be sitting here because it's a non-issue the attorney general has the right to say that the federal government has the right of appeal but they are not talking about that they are talking about their right to disobey court order is that really what they're saying or they are saying that um, the pre-rendition 
Mm -hmm. There were cases, there were charges against Namdi Kano, yes. including the fact that he's a flight risk because he jumped bail, yeah. having been given or granted uh, bail. Are you saying that he doesn't have any more questions well, to answer? The, no, see, listen, the, this notion of Namdi Kano jumping bail is, is straining the boundaries of defamation of character. He didn't mm. jump bail. Okay. I personally secured a judgment on January 19th this year from High Court of Omaha that obliterated that notion completely because the event that compared his departure from Nigeria was too compelling. It was not volitional. So he had to depart Nigeria in search of a safe heaven and to save his life. And the ruling of the High Court of Abia State uh, made it very clear, crystal clear, that his fundamental rights were violated by the attack that was levied at, at his home in September 2017. So with that sort of judgment, the idea or notion that he jumped bail should be discussed at all. Now, talking about pre-rendition offenses, mm -hmm. before you can try anybody for any offense, whether pre-rendition or post-rendition, you have to create the legal environment for transferring a fugitive from one country to the other. And the proper legal environment is called a tradition. The absence of a tradition has created a permanent barrier to the prosecution of one and the can, and there is no way around it. The federal government committed egregious violation of international laws and treaties and laws of Kenya and laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in engaging in that conduct that he did on June 19th last year. So there is no more question of pre-rendition. And the pre-rendition offenses you are talking about have been voluntarily withdrawn by the federal government. They were actually four. Treason, conspiracy to commit treason, uh, defamation of the character of the president, and four, illegal importation of radio equipment. Three of those were voluntarily dropped by the federal government. They left in place only the illegal importation and uh, padded it up with 15 counts okay. of uh, uh, terrorism offenses. But and uh, the, the court dismissed some of them and left the other one. Now, the appeal court has dismissed or struck out the rest of them. So if you don't have any charges pending against somebody and holding him in jail, you're either persecuting him or you engage in an impermissible conduct that the Supreme Court calls okay. holding charge okay. and is unconstitutional. So help us understand this because you said, you know, it's not compulsory that the court uses the word acquittal. But is it not true that if a trial has not taken place, then you cannot talk about an acqu acquittal? In this mm. case, would you say a trial has taken place? No. If a trial hasn't taken place, then there can't be an acquittal. So he hasn't been acquitted. No, Isn't that no, no, trial right? has, no trial has to take place for you to be discharged of criminal charges. To be acquitted. acquitted. To acquitted. be discharged. No, he has yeah, been discharged. The, 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 the argument is over yes. him being acquitted, acquitted or not. Well, I already told you at the beginning. And that's what I'm saying. That, that to clarify he, that, mm -hmm. as a lawyer, would you say a trial has taken place? If no, no do you not say that an acquittal is possible only when a trial. trial takes place. No, it's not correct. You are importing into what the Attorney General said, what he didn't say. He didn't say that a trial has taken place. Of course, it's a standard fact known to everybody that no trial took place. It's also a fact in law mm -hmm. that you can be discharged and acquitted without trial mm -hmm. taking place. Mm -hmm. Attorney General knows that. He's just playing games with the public, mind of the public, and it's unfortunate. I, th I don't think this ought to happen. But if you leave the legalities okay. aside, right. this is the sort of thing that stokes political tensions in society. Mm -hmm. And it can trigger a nasty diplomatic brawl with Britain. You forget Namdi Kano has a second nationality of United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this kind of gives you a deja vu back to 1984 when Nigeria attempted to rendition Omar Udiko, and it led to countervailing consequences. Four persons were convicted and jailed in the UK. The Nigerian aircraft that was going to be used in the interdiction and rendition was is itself interdicted in Britain and seized. And Nigeria, Britain broke up diplomatic relations with Nigeria for two years, and so on and so forth. And here we are again, several decades later, in a democracy, engaging in conduct that exposes Nigeria to diplomatic sanctions. Right. It shouldn't stand.
Okay, so now, what exactly does this uh, discharge of Namdekano by the appeal court, what does it really mean what it for the whole agitation for the southeast? Okay. Does it mean that Namdekano, in the event mm -hmm. that he's actually granted bail or allowed you know, to go, this is more than will bail. it put an end to agitations for Biafra? This is more than bail. Bail can come with conditions. Mm -hmm. If you're granted bail, you are still a ward of court. You may be required to report to police station, report to court, confined in a certain geographical area, but this is a, a discharge. A discharge means you're as free as any one of us sitting here. Mm -hmm. No hindrance of any sort should be placed on you, including your ability to travel within the territory of Nigeria and outside of it. Okay. So there is no condition at all. And what it portends for the... Um, for, for, for the agitation for Biafra is what you're asking about. Right. Well, let's come to that. Since when did self-determination become a criminal offense? I don't think the Court of Appeal would have taken the action he took if he considered it for one moment that Manhattan and the Colonel con con you know, con are committed any offense whatsoever and not of the heinous uh, uh, types that the federal government is accusing him of. Why are we prioritizing punishment, suppression of an enterprise, an activity called safe determination that is protected under the laws of Federal Republic Nigeria? You can check it out. You don't have to take my word for it. Oracle 20, African Charter right. on Human and People's Rights, passed by the National Assembly in 1983, protected safe determination for all people. As a government, you, you can say no, but by, by all means, you shouldn't punish it. You shouldn't penalize it. Even if it is inconvenient to the government, it, you should consider it a political opinion and you should not try to suppress it, suppress it by means right, of punishment yes. of some sort. Right. There, there are calls for a political solution. Yeah. Some Southeast leaders are also saying that, look, if with this ruling or judgment from the appeal court, yeah. it will bring back some level of peace sure. uh, to the Southeast. And my question is, what will that political solution look like? First of all, let me commend everybody that has made a statement tending towards that direction of restoring a peace and security in yeah. South East. That is a very responsible a statement uh, to make. And I would uh, call it on the federal government to look seriously into statements like that. So now, talking about political solution, um, agitation for a separate state is a political question. It's not a legal question. It's not. You can never win sovereignty for a new nation in a court of law. But you can win it across political, the table of political negotiation. Mm -hmm. So when someone rises and says, I want out, I want a separate state, he's actually calling you to the table. Mm -hmm. Because if he can obtain a separate state by the snap of the finger. He doesn't need to talk about it. He'll snap his fingers and the separate state will be thus created. But when somebody says, I want a separate state and I want to get it through the means of a referendum, he's actually calling you to the table. So what is preventing the federal government from coming to the okay. table to discuss this political question okay. of separatism or a separate state for Biafra. And that brings us to my question, mm. because you did earlier say that, you know, if the government continues to hold your client, then it smacks of persecution. Yes. What do you think, if you could hazard a guess, what do you think the government is worried about or is concerned about mm. uh, should your client be released? And I also want to ask you, what is the mood of your client, uh, especially after this decision reached by the appeal court yesterday. Okay. Did you speak to him? Yes, I did. I, I know, not after, not post judgment okay. before. I was the only counsel that met with him yesterday. Okay. Others, you know, deployed themselves to court. So I was with him till uh, almost 5 p.m. at DSS, waiting to see whether we can get use of the judgment. So I could be the first to give him post judgment legal advice. But it didn't happen. So he dismissed me. I went home. I'm sure wherever he is now, he's happy, and he's expecting that the government will do the right thing by opening the gates of DSS and permitting him to go home. Mm -hmm. So, but that is a supposition. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. um, the other part of your question is uh, right. what I missed. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think uh, is the concern of the government? Okay. Well, I, 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 I touched on this issue briefly. Mm -hmm. um, it's very concerning and a bit puzzling that the government of the day should prioritize mm -hmm. 
those agitating for self-determination mm -hmm. as the number one enemy of state. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be at all, not even number one. The number one should be terrorism. Mm -hmm. The government should be asked that question. Why are you prioritizing agitation for a separate state over terrorism? I mean, you're here permitting, okay, we heard that today the National Security Council met over this matter. Is the National Security Council the Supreme Court? Why should the National Security Council consider itself to sit in judgment mm -hmm. over the judgment of a properly constituted constitutional court mm -hmm. in the land? Right. So these are the things that are more worrisome. Uh, to me why this priority why this undue attention and that is being removed away from the number one things that are dogging the society mm -hmm. number one is terrorism and the other day you had a jailbreak at kuje and national security council did meet over it terms right. of book around people were released into society okay, by the well, well, they let's, did meet over right. it uh, i must point oh, they that out or oh, they yeah. did meet okay, at, I stand that corrected. and many security issues afterwards but well i, I yes. stand corrected but you see the reason that i probably might have missed it because the go this government has shown a proclivity not to take terrorism right. fighting terrorism mm. seriously okay. right. they have shown an inclination to be targeting people that are agitating for a separate state, and uh, it's, it's very puzzling. As, as well, you, I'm, you, a, I'm as made, puzzled as you are. You, you have made a, a great point on that already. Now, is the difference? Let's go back to the issue of the difference between acquittal an acquittal and, and discharge. <laughs> okay. In the case of an acquittal, right, you cannot be recharged, but when discharged, you can be re arraigned. Mm -hmm. So it's not a closed book yet. That's yes. what it means. So yes. this Namdekano case. Okay, let me give you an example. If I, if I walk out of here, right now, this is a jail, mm -hmm. the detention center, I walk out on a discharge, mm -hmm. it doesn't give me immunity from further prosecution. Mm -hmm. But I have to be allowed to walk out first. Okay. The court order that Nandikano has been discharged, you obey the order first mm -hmm. before you can bring up any new charges. But when you do that, in this unique in the unique circumstances of Nam de Kano, mm -hmm. there's a problem. Nam de Kano is in Nigeria through a process that breached the law. So what is the fix? I can't tell you everything. I'm not here to give legal advice okay. to the federal government. What's your but name? there's a fix. Mm -hmm, right. One of them is to obey the order first before you talk of bringing up new charges. You have to obey the order by releasing him. If you hold him absent of okay. charges, you have violated the constitution and you have turned the prosecution to persecution. All right, and we'll have to leave it there. Thank very you so much. <laughs> <laughs> A lawyer, Jimako, on Namdekano's appeal court, of course, one of Namdekano's uh, counsels. Thank you so much for joining Wonderful. us on Newsnight. Thank you for watching that video. We appreciate And this is where I'll be leaving you guys. But if this is your first time on this great channel please do it to subscribe and put on your notification bell so that whenever we upload any video for this great channel you will be the first person to see the video so guys see you guys some other time